Fix Nation, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. As we continue our Trading with Mark Makers 2024 series, welcome to week 10. If you're new, if you have not watched any of the previous weeks, you can do so before starting this week. Just go to the FXN Mentoring Playlist for 2024 and you can start from week one. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Mark. I've been trading since 2011. And I'm just here to show you my strategy and hopefully by showing you my strategy, you'll learn something that you can use in your own everyday trading. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and uh, get this week started. With this week comes risk management. We'll be taking a deep dive into one of the most crucial aspects of trading that not a lot of people talk about, and that's risk management. Now, whether you're new to the markets or someone that's been day trading for several years, understanding and implementing effective risk management is essential for staying consistent and profitable over the long haul. In this video, I'm going to break down the specific strategies I use to protect my capital, manage my risk, and navigate the ups and downs of the market. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to apply these principles to your own trading, ensuring that your capital remains safe while you work towards your financial goals. With that said, guys, let's get right into this risk management. A lot of people do not talk about risk management. I don't see this being a big topic on YouTube. So I'm glad I'm able to cover it and just share some strategies myself that I use uh, that basically I use every day to protect my capital. When discussing risk management, it's crucial to have a plan that effectively handles losing streaks. Now, as a trader, guys, you're going to you're going to get losing streaks. I don't care how good you are. I don't care, you know what kind of strategy you're using. Every strategy has losing streaks. It's going to happen, so get used to it. Um, but the risk plan that you have in place, guys, needs to have a way to handle your losing streaks. How do you get out of a losing streak? Your risk management strategy must include a mechanism to flatline your losses, preventing them from escalating out of control. So the mechanisms in place that I'm gonna show you in this video here will show you how to make sure that you have a risk management plan that allows you to flatline your losses. This plan should enable you to achieve steady equity growth, allowing for a consistent upward trajectory in your trading account. And this is the important part because if you have basically something to manage the strategy and keep the losses from flatlining your entire capital, you'll be able to achieve steady equity growth. Additionally, your risk management plan should be flexible, allowing you to adjust your risk exposure based on your recent wins and losses. Now, for me, this is crucially important because the way that I'm gonna show you how I use my risk management is everything is based off of how many wins and how many losses I have. And finally, by scaling your risk up or down in response to your performance, you can protect your capital during tough periods and capitalize on favorable market conditions, ultimately ensuring long-term success in your trading journey. The number one thing about risk management is simply this, it's protecting your capital. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have capital, you don't have money to trade, all right? Now, capital and having a risk management plan gets even more important if you're doing prop firm trading because they obviously have very strict rules and if you haven't noticed yet guys all of these prop firms are literally making up their own rules as they go and if you don't believe me just check out twitter anyways let's get over to the whiteboard and let me break down for you my risk management plan and how I utilize it every single day. The first thing is determining how much money do you have to trade. So you have 1K in your account. What do you think should be your lot size if you have 1K in your account? So if you're trying to trade a $1,000 account and your goal is to make 30 pips, that basically means that you're making $30 per trade. So every trade that you take 
is basically worth $30. Every loss that you take is worth $15. If you're risking $15 per trade because you're taking a standard lot size, what what's the percentage of that of your account that you're risking per trade? All right, so the percentage that you're risking is 1.5%. Okay? So kind of basically like super low risk, right? Pretty low. Nothing too extravagant or crazy. So how can you make this work to where you can have a plan in place to where essentially you're trading and having to manage your risk along the way? Here's how I would do it. If I have a $1,000 count and the lot size that I'm trading is 0.10, here's what I'm, what I'm thinking in my head. The actual lot size of 1.0, of 0.10, is my max lot size. So 0.10 is my max. That's the max lot size that I can use on one trade. But what if you wanted to trade three pairs? What if there's setups? What if there's really good setups on like three pairs? What do you do? Do you trade 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 0 0.10 on each pair? Right? You definitely don't do that, right? <laughs> because then you're then you're 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 risking 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, right? Now you're up to like four something percent of your account, right? So you're not doing that. So here's what I would do. I would start out with trading like this. So my first trade that I would take is actually at a point, uh, point oh six is my first trade. And this is, this is what the premise of you taking one trade at a time, okay? If you're taking multiple trades, then you split this in half. But let's just say we're, we're taking one trade at a time. So if you take a point oh six trade, the first, the first trade that you take, let's say you win that one right the next trade that I take I'm doing a 0.7 if I win that trade cool I go to a 0.8 the next trade if I win that the next trade I take is a 0.9 if I win that then the next trade is a point W or a point uh, point one oh so I've taken one two three four five trades let's say that I've won all the trades what usually happens after you win five trades. Think about what your emotional state is after you win five straight trades. What are you thinking about? How high is your confidence? So what typically happens to the retail trader when they get five wins in a row? And they're like, man, this is way too easy, right? Why am I trading a point one oh? Why don't I trade a standard lot instead? And so what what's probably going to happen when he trades this one lot size a loss is coming right <laughs> so all the profits that you did great on on all your five trades here are gone and you you jacked it up on one trade because you over leveraged your account so to account for this this is what i do so if i get five wins in a row okay my next trade after this i'm actually going back to 0.06 because if I take a loss on the next trade I'd rather be at a 0.06 than at my max lot size so that's what I'm doing on my next trade if I win this one awesome I do it all over again 07 win 08 win keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again right so I keep doing this as long as I'm winning I keep doing I go one up until I get to the max. Once I get to my max, I go back and start over again. Because I'm expecting a loss. At some point, it's going to happen. I'd rather it be at a 06, 07, 08, 09. Right? I don't want it to be at a, at a, at a 0 0.10. So now, let's say that... Let's say I made... I had this. I did it. I won all five. I go back 
to 0 0.06 right here, right? And let's say that on this 0 0.06, let's just say I actually lose that one. My next trade that I take is still at a 0.06. If I win this one, cool, I go back and I go up to a 0 0.07. If I lose this one, I'm going back my next trade to a 0 0.06. So let's say I win this one, and then I go up to a 0.07. I win this one, I go back to a 0.08, and let's say this one I lose. Cool. I go back, my next trade is a 0.06 again. So every time that I lose a trade, I go back to my smallest lot size. So this allows me to automatically account for my losses. I'm already expecting it, right? So if I take a loss and I go back to 0 0.06 and the next trade, I go 0 0.07, I take a loss. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. If I take a loss at 0 0.06, my next trade is again a 0 0.06. If I take another loss, my next trade is a 0 0.06. If I take another loss, my point is, uh, is a 0 0.06. So if I'm losing, I'm not going anywhere near, I'm not going anywhere up in my lot size. I'm staying the same. But now what is the problem that I encounter here? What am I in right now? So I'm in the middle of a losing streak. What do I do? I stop trading. I stop trading. If you get to four losses in a row, you stop trading. And I mean stop trading for like that day or the week or whatever, depending on how, how these losses come. If you've taken, you know, if you're, if you're taking a trade, let's say one trade a day and you've lost four trades in a row, stop trading for the week or cut the week short and call it a day. So if you've taken four trades in a day and you've lost four in a day, just stop trading for that day. If you've taken you know, four losses in a week in a row like this, stop trading for that week. There's no point in trying to keep trading because after four losses, your mindset is all about trying to get the money back. And it's no longer about trying to find the right setup. Your mindset is about revenge trading to get back your money that you lost. You start losing. And it seems for the life of you, you can't get not even one damn pip. Not even if they're giving them away, you can't catch them. And so you end up making just really stupid mistakes for no reason. So just stop trading. Cut, cut the losses already. It's like you're already, you're, you're literally like bleeding out money. So cut it. Just remember that you're not here for a trading of a week or a month or whatever. You're trying to do this for years to come. You can't sustain the kind of losing that you you know that you're doing so just cut it so what do you do after that week or the day is over how do you get back you got to have a plan to how do you get back on the winning side of a trade right how do you find a winning trade so what you do is you go ahead and you have so you have a signature trade what the hell is a signature trade? A signature trade is a trade setup that you know will get you a win. Think of, of different trade setups as different, I don't know, playing cards. You want to play your ace. So if you're really good at type 1 setups, or if you're really good at continuation trades, or if you're really good at type 3 setups, whatever that setup is, that's the one that you're going to use. So essentially, you're not going to take a trade until you get that specific trade to show up on the charts. So whatever the, that, that trade setup is, whatever it's you know continuation trade, reversal, type one, two, three, four, whatever. Whatever your best trade setup is that you know well, that you know has all your confirmations, all that stuff. That's the next trade that you're taking, and you're not taking any other trades besides that one. And so once you do it, obviously then the cycle starts over again, right? You still do a point W, and then you could start, you know, you could start going again. 
Now, what if you run into a situation to where your balance, let's say your balance of 1K that you initially started with drops below 1K. So if your balance is ever below the initial starting point that you had, you're doing nothing else but trading 0.06s, 0.06s until you get back up to your original balance. If your balance gets to be um, 20% or less, so in, in this case of $1,000, if it's like, let's say, $800, so say your balance drops to $800, you cannot trade a 0 0.06 as your, as your minimum stop loss. You have to make the adjustments because at $800, your max lot size should be a point. So then just do the math. If your max lot size is a 0.08 at that point, all right, just go backwards. 0 0.07, 0 06, 0 05, 0 04. So you're trading at a 0 0.04. And you're still at a 0 0.04 until you get back up to 1K. When you get up to 1K, you can go back to your 0 0.06. So if your account balance ever drops below 20%, so in this case, from 1K to 800, you need to adjust your lot size correctly. So you can literally account for the fact that you lost 20% of your account. Because that, if you're not, if you don't adjust your lot size at that point, you're basically now trading an $800 account close to your maximum lot size. And so if you take any losses, this is gonna drain a lot faster. This is why if you have four losses in a row or more, just stop trading. You're not trading anything else but that signature trade first. If you want to trade like, let's say if you want to trade more than this, you need more of that. So if you want to trade more than this as your max, you need more of money, more money, right? So let's just say, let's say that you started with 1K, Right, you trade your your 0 0.01 or your uh, your 0 0.10 lot, and let's say you do this plan, and you grow it to 2k. Once you get to 2k, and now you can up your your max to this, as your max. So every thousand dollars you go up, you raise it. You raise it basically. So 3k would be 0 0.30, and it's the same thing, right? If you have a 3k in your account and your max is, is 3.0 then you're just going back down 5 so you're doing what point uh, point what 26 27 28 29 30 for the compound effect if you're trying to really grow an account yourself like from scratch right you have to allow the comp the compound effect to take place to take place the compound effect on a, on a trading account really doesn't even get started until you get to 10k that's when it really starts because at that point now you're trading a standard lot size and so at that point now it's it's three hundred dollars per trade so if you if you think really think about you know what in general how many people and you know if you ask if you take a poll of a of hundred people you're like hey Every month, about how much money would you need a month to kind of survive, you know, and just be live a, a normal good life? What what would you think that number is? To live, I'm not talking about like living like an extravagant lifestyle. I'm just talking about living a good, just a good normal life, having your bills paid, you know, having all, all of your bills paid, being able to support you, your family, or whatever. Everybody's number is different, right? We get that, but like in general. You know, if you if you ask somebody, you know, hey, you know, if you pull a hundred or a thousand people or whatever, I think the average is is going to range somewhere around five to six k or something like that. You know, depending, of course, on on where you live. If you live in New York, you fucking need some crazy amount of money. Same thing if you live in California. California, and New York are like the two anomalies because they're so expensive to live. But let's just say if, if most people can get by with 5K 
a month. What does that translate to into uh, into actual trades, right? So if you're if you're making let's say three hundred per trade, that's about sixteen trades or so a month. So sixteen trades per month. What does that come out to a week? It's like four trades a week. So four trades a week, you know, three hundred dollars a trade. It's twelve hundred dollars a week. Times four, it comes out to like forty eight hundred or so. So if you just get to 10K, this is where your account can really compound or starts to compound. This is why it's so important to still have a job because once you get it to 10K, now you're good. Now you can really start to, to see the effect on your trade or on your, on your trading account. Because if you, want, if, you want to live off your, if you want to live off the profits of your trading, you need to build your account first. You can't quit your job if you just have 10K in your trading account. What I'm saying is once you get to 10K, you'll see your account grow a hell of a lot faster. Nowadays, though, with the added, um, the addition of like all these prop firms that'll give you the money to trade, that's not, no longer a, a, like a real problem. Now it's just talking about, do you know how to trade? The money part is no longer an issue. You're not having 10K to trade. You're not having $1,000 to trade. Now it's, that's not a, no longer a problem anymore. Because you can just trade with a prop firm, and they'll give you a hundred k. You just need to learn, learn, know how to trade. So now the opportunity of you actually making five, six, seven k are way more realistic. Because if you know how to trade and you have a hundred thousand dollar account, I mean, just do the math. What's your lot size? What's your lot size on a hundred on a hundred k account? So on a hundred k account, what is, and you're trading a. a 10 lots per trade, what's every trade worth? If a standard lot is worth $300, what's a 10 standard lots worth? So every, every, every trade is now a 3K trade. I mean, I'm not no mathematician or something, but if you take 16 trades at 3K per trade, that's a pretty big chunk of change. When you have an account like that, there's no realistically there's no reason for you to even trade a 10 10 lot size you know what i mean there's no reason to even stress about trading the max lot size you could trade five five lots if you average 16 i mean you're still making like 24k a month like what are we talking about everything opens up i'm telling you once you have the money in the account the possibilities are endless all right guys so I hope that this video brought you some value. I hope this video taught you how you can potentially use different strategies for your risk management. At least if you can get something out of this video, something that could help you in your own trading, protect your capital. And again, it's just a different way uh, that I do things for risk management. So hopefully this video helped you in creating a risk management plan for you. But guys, do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, let me know in the comments, what kind of things are you using in your risk management plan? How do you manage your risk on your trade? All right, so until the next video, guys, thank you so much and have a good rest of your week.